Welcome back to the Crypto Market Updates channel with another update on the ICE project. This is going to be an interesting one. The ICE project just released a update video or a live stream with Zeus and uh, Vindicated Chitty and uh, the Ray Dude. So I went ahead and I listened to the entire thing so you wouldn't have to. And uh, I made my own conclusions. And so that's going to be a bit of a longer one, I think. So why don't you strap on your seatbelt, grab a cup of coffee or beer, whatever you want to uh, sip on while you sit through this. And uh, let's get ready. Make sure to smash up the like, subscribe to the channel and stick around till the very end because this might be a juicy one. Here we go. There's a lot. Uh, it's an hour and almost 20 minutes uh, live podcast. So I took some notes and then I put them into a rather rough uh, form of a PPT. That's what I will be using in order to go through the points that were mentioned, that were talked about, and uh, and explain them how I saw them and how I understood them with my limited understanding of psychological principles. Because you need to understand those a little bit and have an inclined understanding of of um, how human psychology works and how it's used uh, to one's advantage or against uh, to to the disadvantage of others. Um, in order to understand what Zeus is actually doing. Um, and we'll also get to the name of his Zeus. So, first things first, the KYC. <clears throat> there seems to be a lot of confusion. And uh, uh, one thing that the people, Zeus particularly, doesn't really like is the continuous questions that are being asked, the repetitiveness of questions that people ask in the comments. So... <clears throat> I'm going to digest it here for you. KYC, everyone can pass it, but only those with five members will receive the tokens, which means that you can pass the KYC. No problem there. Everybody will get the KYC and you will receive your mining rewards the way you have. But uh, in order to receive the bonuses that you sign up for, you will have to have five members. Although I'm not exactly clear on how that's going to be, uh, with the five members, it could be that you might need to have five members inside your team who are active um, in order to receive any coins. So that's a little bit uh, unclear in this, in this, uh, at this point right now. So the first phase started already. So apparently, uh, some people have been beginning to get onboarded onto the uh, platform. Uh, using the KYC and the reason the uh, Zeus said that there were only a few people that have been um, issued the the KYC and I assume that's probably the top users that that have you know the early uh, adopters that have been issued the KYC procedures to be completed on the app in order to test it and so according to him they will take this weekend and test it and so if provided provided that everything works well um, more people will be receiving the KYC starting Monday um, and so more people will begin to be getting onboarded onto the platform using the KYC. So the first time KYC, uh, you will have to take a picture. You will have to take a picture, a snapshot of yourself, a still picture with your camera, and then you will have to pass a motion test. The motion test is uh, has been implemented by so many Binance users, the same motion test uh, for verification purposes. Only once to when you complete the KYC, you take a picture of your face and then you have to do the motion test in order to verify um, that you are actually a living human being so that, you know, you can't use a photo. Um, and so usually I think there is like three different poses. Poses You might have to smile or turn your head left or turn your head right or any of these figures and it'll be contained within a uh, circle in which you have to perform these actions. So that's going to be the motion test. Now the kicker is that you will be required to do the motion test, not the picture itself, but just the motion test every time you renew a session of, of uh, mining on the app. So this could occur every 12 to, to, I guess, 23 hours and 59 minutes, anytime before 24 hours are up because if your 24 hours are up, then of course your continuation is up and then you don't get your days off, which will be important uh, towards the end uh, of, will be important in the second phase of the KYC during which you could be losing uh, tokens. Your tokens will be slashed and I will get to that in a second. 
So, um, you will be required to do the motion test every single time you renew your mining session. The second phase will start in November. Not until November will we see the second phase, will people see the second phase, and the purpose is to implement knowledge tests. Knowledge tests will be on top of motion tests. So it appears that you will be required to do the motion test and then followed by a uh, quiz about the project, or it could be vice versa. I assume that it's gonna be a motion test and then there will be a quiz. Each session will have a motion test and a knowledge test, test questions based on frequently asked questions and a knowledge base that's available on the website and they will be in the form of multiple choice questions. So there will be a question and I guess there will be uh, four answers. That's from what I understood. Or maybe there'll be four different questions provided, then you can choose one of them. If answer is wrong, if you answer the question wrong, you will be uh, your coins will be slashed for 24 hours, uh, which means you'll be losing a lot of coins. So right now, the idea behind the continuation of days and building up your days off is so that if you make mistakes um, your coins will not be slashed you can use these days off in order to kind of supplement for the 24 hour uh, coin slashing that might occur if you make a mistake on the test uh, next questions will all be different each time so the questions i guess are meant to be ai generated so they'll they'll vary i mean the white paper is quite long and there is a lot of information and knowledge base so they can pick and choose the questions they want they could phrase them in any different way so there's plenty of questions but the the goal was to not have the same question so that people can't pass the questions to other people and you know have the answers ready and it seems like there will be one question per session so face scan uh, one question and the questions you will have about 30 seconds to one minute to answer the question if you don't answer the question within the given time then your test will be marked as failed and you will be uh, losing tokens so uh, and uh, vindicated Chitty and uh, the Ray fella the influencers that are were discussing these things with Zeus asked the question uh, what will happen to people with dyslexia or people who can't read well? Um, you know, not everybody uh, speaks English as a first person. I assume that a lot of people can speak it, but may not necessarily be able to read it. So what happens to those people? Too bad for those people. There is <laughs> your shit out of luck. If you can't read in English and if you don't understand the question, you're simply shit out of luck. Hopefully you have somebody next to you who can explain the question to you and provide you with an answer. Otherwise, you bet for you. Token distribution. So this is where we start kicking off the nonsense, the entire uh, strangeness of this project. So I, will, I was gonna open up with an introduction of, here we go, introduction with the good, the bad and the ugly. Uh, it seems like there's more of the bad and the ugly now than there are goods and so that's the presentation. More of the bad and the ugly, not so much of the goods anymore. Uh, the project is becoming, I, I keep calling it project because I, I can't think of a of another name but honestly I'm, I'm beginning to feel less and less like like this you know like calling it a project I'm not sure that's a project it's uh anyway so token distribution ETH tokens will be issued on ETH whatever the tokens will be named we don't know uh, to be traded on Uniswap or pancake swap uh, I can't remember exactly which one it was one of these they're you know almost similar but the goal the thing that Zeus explained was um, the reason why they chose ETH is because of its accessibility, its wide usage. It's the biggest uh, blockchain in terms of uh, usability and things being sent back and forth between chains. And it also allows, you know, cross-chain transactions, which is what will be required in order for people to um, switch between the tokens from ETH-based tokens to the in-app-based whatever the IOUs, right? Access to tokens will be given weekly or monthly. Zeus wasn't very clear on that. He said weekly or monthly. So, you know, why are they not sure? This is a problem, problem I think. Why don't they know? Over 20 people working on this app and, and he's being wishy-washy about nee, maybe weekly, maybe monthly. When will you find out? Isn't this supposed to go live like soon? Um, why is it that it's not determined yet? I mean, if these people were so experienced as he claims, and if they had so many people as he claims, Shouldn't they have these things figured out? Not to mention that they did spend millions of dollars, which he brings up again and again, 
suggesting that this, you know, the, the amount of money that was invested in the creation of this app and development of this app was so huge that there is no question in, shouldn't be any question in anybody's mind that, you know, this is a legit project. But I mean, if, like I said, if there are over 20 experienced people working on it and they've invested millions of dollars into this, then why don't they know these things? Why, why even, why are we even going for this swap? Why all of a sudden this changed to ETH when prior to that, that was not the plan. So it seems to me that it's a bit fishy that these 20 something experienced people uh, with millions of dollars investments weren't able to put their heads together and figure these simple things out really. So there will be a token based on ETH. Additionally, the ION token, once mainnet, um, there will be a second token, the ION token, and you can swap ION for the ETH token, whatever the name of that thing will be. So there will be two tokens. Initially, there will be the token on ETH, which is now, and then there will be the ION token, which will continue to be run on the app. And I guess the goal is, that's what they claim, that the ION token will be run on the blockchain that used to be TON, and now it becomes ION, the same blockchain that was used to develop, um, to, to implement, or that was developed by the founder of Telegram, but it was never implemented. So now they're going to use it. So they're going to launch the ION token, uh, or ion coin and then there will be the the token on eth whether that was going is going to work out or not my question is if if the time comes and there will there are two tokens if that ever comes to pass what would be the exchange ratio would it be one to one would it be 15 to nil <laughs> what's the swap ratio questionable very questionable. And the fact that there are now two tokens. Okay. Problematic existence. There was a lot of uh, acronyms or, or new terminology being used by Ray's. Um, so I figured I'm going to throw in some of my problematic, uh, sub, <laughs> some, some of my terminology as well here. Problematic existence. So Zeus says they spent millions on this app. If so, why so poorly prepared for everything? Why is everything a surprise? Why were they not aware of the fact that they will need to deploy it on ETH? Why, why all of a sudden is there such a change of heart? It seems like there's a lot of last minute changes and it feels like for a million dollar investment, this should be a lot better prepared. Zeus says other people working on it. So if so, why are they so poorly prepared? These are two main points of, you know, that show a lack of confluence in what he says and what actually reality, what the actual reality is. Lots of money, lots of people, and yet the project seems to be very unorganized. With the exception of the app that's running on the phone, what else is there? There's nothing else. Literally, there's nothing else. Zeus says he has over 20 years experience in the tech world but is surprised when people ask the same questions. So he says he understands crypto, but is surprised when the audience asks the same questions. He is new to crypto and communities. That's my perception. I have been admin of a crypto group for over a year now, and I've been part of different uh, uh, communities, different crypto groups for the duration of about six, five, five to six years right now, since essentially 2017 when I got into crypto. And the number of repetitive questions is never ending because there's always new people coming, people going, people coming in, people going in. And so not everybody is willing to read the entire white paper. The majority of people don't read the white paper. The majority of cryptocurrency investors or people who are in crypto have not even read the most essential white paper, uh, the Bitcoin white paper. So what do you expect from people who are just joining a project? And let's be honest, Crypto is all about money. That's the whole purpose of crypto right now. There is no other reason. A very small fraction of people believe that there is an intrinsic value in crypto. But the majority of people in crypto are here for the money, not for the tech. And But Zeus seems to completely fail to understand that, which tells me that he has no idea. He is brand new to this. He may have worked in in. Uh, in uh, in tech, but he has no idea in what communities, crypto communities are like, and he has absolutely no clue in how to run them properly. And that shows me uh, that he showed that by uh, banning me from both groups for simply asking a question. The first one was when I was sharing my video to help people. 
maybe it was perceived as spam, spam. I could excuse that, but still I would expect some kind of explanation. No. The second one, when I asked him on his private uh, Twitter, I just simply asked a couple of times, why was I being banned? And I was banned on his Twitter. There were several people that I talked with, that contacted me and I've been in contact with and said the same thing. They had a problem with a with their login information to the app and they asked the same question several times and as zeus said on the podcast they would delete they would ban people without notice without explanation if people were asking stupid questions those were his words if people were asking stupid questions repetitive questions they would ban them um without notice and without explanation block all negative questions or repetitive questions me and others no negativity allowed he just you know the audience right now i don't know again i don't know if they actually have five over 500 people following them on twitter or not but with an audience of that size they can afford to to you know dispense of anybody who is too pesky or they just don't want to be bothered because i guess you know zeus doesn't need to be bothered by pesky stupid questions no intrinsic value so Let's jump into this idea of mining. First thing, mining requires a proof of work, which means there is an exchange for of, of computational uh, value or computational effort for a repayment. Bitcoin, in order to get Bitcoin, you need to start up a bunch of computers, very powerful computers right now, and have them running for an extended period of time in order to solve the equations and yada yada. And then you become, you get rewarded with Bitcoin in exchange. ICE has no proof of work. The thing that runs on your phone is based on how many people you draw into the app. There is no power usage because the app runs or, or the numbers run even when the app is turned off. That means it's not using your, your telephone. If you delete the app and you, you download it again and you go back to it and you log in, your numbers will have increased. I mean, if you do it within 24 hours, let's say you start up your session, you delete the app off the phone and you come back in 24 hours, you reinstall the app and you log back in, you'll be able to see that it, it's been mining. There is more, there will be more uh, IOUs in your uh, network. That's not proof of work. That's not mining. So in order to have, uh, you know, value a currency needs to be either proof of work like bitcoin or it needs to be global have global acceptance by agreement like reserve currencies money essentially you know fiat money doesn't have any intrinsic value other than what people agreed upon for hundreds of years we've been using the us dollar for hundreds of years we've been using other currencies maybe not hundreds maybe a couple of hundred years is really not that long but we, as a global community, we've agreed that the US dollar is the reserve currency. And so that's how it maintains its intrinsic value. Because the US dollar is no longer backed by gold. When it was backed by gold, it had, you know, the intrinsic value that it held was that it could be exchanged for gold uh, bullions. Right now, there is nothing like that. Um, the only thing that keeps its currency, the, the value of US, the US dollar is the agreement uh, you know, between the world, people, people of the world that we agree, it's, this is what it is. It's got an intrinsic value. Ice doesn't have any intrinsic value. None. Ice doesn't have either one of those. It doesn't, it's not a proof of work, um, system, and it doesn't have global accepted, uh, acceptance by agreement that, that it's, uh, it's got any value. So it is not a mining project, despite it calling itself that first token being issued on ETH, not mined, just issued and airdropped in exchange for an uh, app IOUs. That's what it is. So we're getting IOUs right now and then they'll be exchanged for the tokens on ETH. And we don't even know if it's going to be one for one, what the ratio will be. So it's still all in the dark. None of that was said. And, uh, you know, Zeus is going to say, what, you want free money? Because that's his attitude creating value out of thin air this is uh we're, we're diving in now into the realm of psychological manipulation which is what zeus is very capable of doing um if he in fact does have a sociology degree then he is very well of aware of how to manipulate people uh, and uh, maybe his upbringing 
um, also helped him with that. Um, I think he's from Polish uh, descent, and there's a lot of crooksters in Poland. These people, man, they're... Uh, I don't trust these Polacks. <laughs> Uh, same people who founded uh, FutureNet, who also was a scam, um, and it, it fell on its face, and so Zeus is one of these guys. Anyway, by making people learn about ice, Zeus believes he can create value for ice. If people put in the effort into having to learn, they will begin to believe that ice has value. It doesn't. Ice doesn't have any value. S especially since your learning does not guarantee you receive tokens. You spending the time to learn about, you know, to read through the uh, FAQs and the, the knowledge base does not guarantee you passing the test. There could be a question that you simply haven't memorized or you, you missed somehow and you will fail it and <laughs> you will have spent time learning, um, reading, and you will still fail the test. The idea of having to learn stuff for it is ridiculous, but that's exactly what he's doing. The goal of creating value for the for this uh, ice entity is by making people believe that it's valuable by having them spend and invest time into learning that's the whole idea because otherwise this token has no sorry this this ice thing has no value and you are punished for wrong answers on the test this is psychological manipulation using emotional and psychological tactics to change or alter someone's perception or behavior in an under, uh, underhanded deceptive or even abusive way all of these apply to Zeus. He's not a sociologist, he's a, so a sociopath. That's that's the, that's the how he comes across. I don't know if he's like that in his real life or if this is just a tactic, a tactic that he's uh, uh, applying to the community because he needs to create an obedient uh, community, one that follows and is easily controlled. And so he is using these tactics and I'm going to go over these tactics right now. What is psychological manipulation? Superficial charm. Use praise, compliments, small favors, uh, and excessive public recognition to get you to accept responsibilities beyond your role. So if you've noticed, um, all the people using the app are called snowmen. Being a snowman or being an ambassador, um, you know, it's supposed to hold some kind of prestige, but the first thing it does, it's supposed to make you part of the community. Everybody's a snowman. Um, and so, you know, if you learn these things, then you're good. Um, you're, you're asked to do small favors, like learning the things that you need to learn in order to answer the questions. Um, and uh, the mention of, you know, everybody being a snowman, that's kind of the excessive public recognition. Everybody's a snowman. You're, we're all part of the same team. Social comparisons. Constantly talk about the strengths of others in front of you. You should role model after Dave. He really knows how to get this idea approved or discuss some form of an ideal employee. Uh, great team players check their ego at the door uh, to indicate to you the role model you should be uh, emulating. So this is exactly it. The people who will study, this is what Zeus says. Yeah, the people who study and learn, they will pass the test. They will not have any problems. You should be more like those people. If you're not, then you are a failure. Uh, you need to be more like them. This is social comparison. The next one is misinformation. Feeds you with misinformation about others to make you develop negative perceptions of them. So he does that by talking about people who ask stupid questions. You know, don't be like the people who ask stupid questions. He's making the people who are in the uh, Twitter account believe that they are not stupid because they're still there. Because if they were stupid, They'd be asking stupid questions and they'd be booted out of the turn out of the click. But since they're not stupid and they're not asking stupid questions, that's why they're allowed to stay. This is what he's doing. And then the last one is treating you like a child. He is. He's treating everybody like a child. It's ridiculous. Influencer support. Both influencers support Zeus's manipulation by making him look humane and fun. He isn't. He's a sociopath. I mentioned that in the in the interview. Zeus was coming across again, once again, as he always does, as a complete douchebag. Yeah, and he was saying f this and f that, f that, and if you say doing stupid shit and stupid f that, then you're being booted out. And he was coming across as a complete douchebag, which he is. Um, and both 
both the influencers that he was talking with made him tried to make him look make him look you know as he was approachable and tried to make light of the conversation at one point he even giggled and kind of chuckled like <laughs> i don't know that was a strange laugh i think he was choking on his own saliva um so the problem with those influencers those influencers are either clueless and in which case i feel sorry for them if they're completely clueless as to what he's doing then i feel sorry for them because they as well are being manipulated however the fact that they did bring him back onto this you know um into the light of being humane and fun the, uh, they may be completely clued in and are in on, in on the manipulation and so my guess is they have no idea that zeus uh, what zeus is doing um but they have enough sense to to guide zeus out of his dark place of being a complete jackass into you know appearing to be a more likable human being which he clearly isn't maybe he is in his private life but certainly not in in the light that he uh, the, uh, approaches displays himself and usually the case is that if that's how you approach people you don't know then that's probably your your general demeanor as well in private the last thing on this here is zeus apollo like what's his name there are two i thought there were two people i thought there were two founders zeus and apollo but it seems like the the name zeus and apollo are used interchangeably and which one is he um he thinks of himself as a god of some sort <laughs> like <laughs> these are the names he is zeus so first of all, Zeus is the god of sky and thunder in Greek mythology, and Apollo was the god of practically everything, also in Greek mythology. So he doesn't miss a step, man. He compares himself to godliness, and uh, this is why he thinks he's got the right to, to treat people like that. This is like a typical um, display of sociopathic behavior. Bear problems. There is no Apple app. Why? Why is there no Apple app? If there are 20, over 20 people working on the project and they invested millions of dollars into this project, I guess they sidestepped the whole development of, uh, of an Apple app. Maybe they ran out of money for that particular uh, part of the project. <laughs> Zeus said that Apple rejected their proposal um, first time and now they have reapplied for the second time and I guess they're waiting for the second rejection. Ray, the influencer, one of the influencers, the host of the podcast, says uh, it's not the team's fault the app was rejected from the Apple Store. Um, if it's not the team's fault, then who's it? Is it? Apple has certain standards. Yeah, they apply when you apply for uh, for your app to be released on the Apple Store. You must complete. You must follow certain standards. You must follow uh, certain rules in order to have the app being released onto the store and if you didn't follow if you didn't fit in the standards then apple decide uh declines your application as simple as that is that apple's fault that your application was crap no it's the developer's fault so yeah it's a hundred percent the um the development teams if there is one such a thing uh fault that the app is not on apple store and who knows maybe it never went into uh, a proposal maybe it was never submitted it's available apparently in like a um, uh, pc form um, online but it's not available on the phone so so yeah so there is once again ray obviously jumping in uh because he's one of the adopters the early adopters and so is uh, uh indicated chidi um and uh so you know they they try to benefit as much as they can and support and uh, my guess is would be that they are being paid uh by zeus and whoever else pays them to promote the this project they're not just you know um on because he actually who is it chidi or ray chidi maybe chidi is the marketing manager as a fact matter of fact so he is definitely getting paid by them failed conviction ice is not unique it's a collection of a number of different things ICE is not a unique project, there are a bunch of projects that are similar to it and ICE just pulled a bunch of them together uh, and threw them into the same app. So this is not like, you know, it would probably take a, a couple of uh, relatively okay coders to, to figure out the code, to pull the code and throw it together. It wouldn't take a team of 20 and certainly wouldn't take um, uh, millions of dollars. Also. The video that we saw, um, there was a 
couple of days ago they released a video showing kind of an example of how this app will work with the social media and all that stuff um, and whether that's actually happening or not not sure um, because I guess we're gonna have to wait for a year to see if this version of the app will actually come to life but I guess they're throwing in um, you know article posting or there is going to be some articles you'll be able to send money to people and and comment on their on their posts and you'll be able to send them money all these things are already in place in different apps um so this is not a unique development not at all and my guess is that most of them will probably not be completed or they won't be uh completed properly and they just simply won't be worth your while. They'll be very simplistic and people will be getting frustrated with the use or it's just going to be like a scrolling, you know, magazine look through. If you're a Star Trek, then you will look, it will look good for you because you want it to look good because you need it to look good after having invested so much time into the project. Now, I'm not saying that this is what's going to happen, but I'm saying that this is what's going to happen because um, so far, everything that Zeus stands for and the way he talks and the, the crap that he, you know, makes up is leading me to believe that this is what's going to happen um it's a year from now and uh a year is a very long time so after a year of waiting people will need this app to work because that's a long period of time to invest into something um and if you're spending the entire year promoting uh collecting people into your team and then all of a sudden it turns out to be crabby you close your left eye and you just keep looking one dimensionally at this project that is, you know, mediocre at best. Um, and uh, you try to convince yourself that it's a lot better than it is. I've seen it before and I get the feeling that this will happen again. Only those who obey. So this falls in line with, uh, you know, his rhetoric of being the god of thunder. Uh, on the podcast, someone called in with a question about losing your login and Zeus answered simply that it cannot be happen. Basically, the guy said, uh, what happens if you lose your login? And he said, no, it can't happen because even if you lost your phone, you'd still be able to recover it, blah, 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 blah. And then the caller was simply cut off. Like uh, he wanted to, con so Zeus answered and the caller wanted to continue with the question and he was just dropped. He, he was not allowed to continue with the question. Obviously he wanted to have follow, uh, ask a follow-up question and he was not allowed. So that's that. Now, the last thing I wanted to address is the strangeness uh, of the app itself. So all top users with pics are of Asian descent in the app itself, which is odd, I find. And then most people I hear talking have a strong African accent. So it seems to me like these two groups are the main groups that have been targeted by the advertising campaigns, um, which which is questionable because he Zeus is clearly from Europe. So why are there so few European um based members of the app it seems like they went out after um third world countries essentially and promoted this product to people who may you know may not have had the right type of education who may not be have enough understanding of english or or the cryptocurrency sphere to understand what the what what's happening if you go into stats, you will see a number of people. And funny thing is, there are top countries, and I was used to be able to open this, and now there is nothing. Uh, uh, if you search by country, for example, let's say, I don't know, China. There is nothing. Nothing comes up. Uh, okay, how about Nepal? I remember seeing a Nepalese flag. Nothing. Okay. Uh, there is USA. USA nope nothing so nobody shows up however the people at the very top like i said if you go to top users and see all most of them seem to be of uh, asian descent i don't know where they're located and what their origins are but this is the first dude he's on place six global rank six this picture is obviously not a person but you know uh, unless you're from Asian descent, you would not be putting this picture on your profile. Or chances are very un un unlikely. Uh, this looks like a Japanese manga character. Once again, similar explanation. This is a person ranked number eight. Also of Chinese descent. Oh, sorry, of Asian descent. I don't know where, which country. 
Uh, and I go down the line and basically all of these people um, have an Asian look. You can go down as far as, with the exception of this dude who is just a generic, generic uh, picture taken off the website. All of these have uh, Chinese connotations to them. This is a Chinese flag, I think. <coughs> Cats, uh, manga, uh, what is this, mahjong? Yeah, these are like Chinese games, mahjong, stones, or some some games. But so, it looks to me like most majority of these top, except for this guy here again, uh, seem to be based um, out of Asia. Somebody posting their pictures of their kids. Um, it's far down. And so I find that strikingly odd that there aren't too many Europeans and it's not, you know, it doesn't matter. It's not a bad thing. It's just questionable that they've chosen to target that specific demographic of people uh, who are not from Western countries, not from Western nations, uh, people who may in many cases lack the proper education to understand English. And as Zeus explicitly stated in the interview, there is no translation of the white paper. The white paper comes only in English and if you want to get it translated, go translate it yourself on Google. Whenever there is a project, they usually provide the white paper in at least two or three different languages if it's a good project. You know, it'll be in... in uh, for example, every single Korean project has an English translation to it. And most English projects that are good will have an English white paper and then the white paper will be translated into at least two other languages. But these guys know and he explicitly said, no, that's not going to happen. Why? I guess, you know, to make it easier for people who don't read English, who can't understand it very well, to fail at their tests and be just a number on the screen adding to their bulk of representatives so they can say, look at our our uh, support. We've got so many people. So to conclude, I have become very skeptical of this project um, and particularly of the psychological manipulation that is used by the fella who calls himself uh, Zeus to, to implement on the community. And it's very problematic. Somebody messaged me in in uh, one of the videos that I posted on my channel, on the Crypto Market Updates channel, um, kind of implying that I shouldn't spend so much time making videos about this one project that I should focus on other things. But here's the thing. Projects like these are the reason why people get scammed. Projects like these maybe are the reason that people lose money. And I simply would hate for people to lose money on something stupid like that. Be aware, I'm not saying run for the hills, but be aware if it ever comes to the point where they're asking you for money, run like hell. That's where you draw the line. You do not put any money into this project. If you have to spend money on transactions on Ethereum because you need to transition to tokens, also question whether it's, it's uh, worth it. Sincerely question it. So this is just a cautionary uh, preview because like I said, Zeus doesn't allow any negative uh, opinions, any negative comments shared anywhere. And so you will not see, you will see a complete bias, <clears throat> confirmation bias, complete conformity in the community because everybody will be scared to say something negative because if they do, they'll be kicked out of the team. And so in the uh, X chat, you will not see any negative comments. You will not see any stupid questions. So videos like this, is what you need to share with everybody so they can see and have a second opinion which is being blocked by the hypocritical Mr. Um, godliness over there. Be careful of this fella. He's not a sociologist, he's a sociopath. There is a huge difference. And with that, I'm going to complete this video. Um, make sure to smash up the likes, subscribe to the channel. Please let me know in the comment section below what you think. If you agree, if you disagree, let's have a conversation. Let's have a discussion. I'll see you in the next video. Crypto Father out.